dawn, it's the dawn, the rising show. Oh, I never did it like I'm walking. The dawn, oh, it looks like I'm moving forward. Welcome, I'm Doug Rice. Yeah, was a little bend on the intro. I just nib I did the walk. It looks like I'm walking. Ah, oh, the variations, the possibilities. Good morning. Doug Rice, wake the fuck up! 5.33 in the morning. Been up an hour and a half, baby. Just the usual do that I do. How's everybody doing? How are you feeling? You feel good? Uh, I'm just getting started, motherfuckers. You give me a minute. Well, baby. Is it getting interesting? Are you liking it? Huh? Are you smiling? Fourteen children. Dear God, I think now the number is 19 people. Dead! On the whim of an individual, short-sighted, weak-minded. Who the fuck knows? But! Isn't it strange how quickly we can move on? I mean, uh, you know, no one takes any comfort in the deaths of children, for God's sake. Cross not. But so soon, after the murder of ten adults, I will not forget. You will not distract. You will not obfuscate. You will not simply brush aside. I will not allow it. No. And it seems the gunman murdered Interesting. Everybody's calling this man Hispanic. I don't quite understand the dynamics of trying to, I don't know, kind of remove the caucasity from the equation, but no. Having a Spanish name does not remove your origins. Your reasons for doing what Ever you do. The fact that you decide at 18 you must have a high-powered rifle. You must purchase one. The same types of motivations that drive individuals seem common throughout like a thread going through this society. And so no, 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 the same the same kinds of ideations, realizations, shortcomings, the same kind of insecurities, the same kind of determinations, machinations. All of this contributes to the individual mindset that says, get a high-powered rifle and end the lives en masse. That is exclusive, baby. And oh, how quickly we forget. Mm, mm, mm. I tweeted that the Texas governor or some senator saying he can't imagine sending his child to school and not having that child come home. Really, I can't imagine my grandmother going shopping on Saturday and not coming home either. How dare you? And then you have the unmitigated gall to assert that flags will be flown at half staff. But you don't move governmental building flags for 10 dead black bodies, do you? Didn't come to mind to do that last Saturday. I might also point out that, my goodness, the Individuals who lost their lives last Saturday, one of them was an individual who obviously had invented a, a new type of vehicle that runs on water, as I understand it. Well, ain't that convenient that that brother happened to have been in the line of fire coming from an individual that drove 200 miles, specifically scouting out an area at a specific time to skill, kill Specific people, I don't know, MK Ultra is a real thing, that's proven. You can just, you can just have it begin on a phone call. I'm going to remind you of a movie. The movie is called The Domino Principle. 
It's a movie that I believe stars Gene Hackman. It involves sleeper cells, individuals in the United States, trained by Russia to do certain things upon a phone call. Miles to go before I sleep. That's the trigger sentence. And those individuals would have predetermined, predestined, predestined things they had to do, operations that they would hold that would result in destruction. The domino principle, a simple phone call initiated the activity. And isn't it interesting that 10 of us get killed, one of us an inventor, and then a week later, another mass shooting to take perhaps our minds off what has been discovered. I don't get what's happening, but I can tell you this, as random as it all seems, it can also easily be all manipulated. What's next and why? Who's writing their 180-page manifesto right now? I wonder, who's next? And the interesting thing is I watch as they talk amongst themselves, watching themselves, murder themselves, trying to distance themselves from themselves. It's almost hilarity to see a face staring in a camera talking about an event distancing yourself from the players as if it's not you. The individualism of caucasity is disgusting. And it's only in reflection to the collectivism that they apply to everyone else when a horrendous event occurs. You understand what I'm saying? When one of them loses their minds, they talk about it as if it's a lab animal that they've caught and they've dissected and they're looking at, but they don't understand they're looking in a fucking mirror. And you know what's fucked up? They won't punish themselves. They won't hold themselves to accountability. And you feel me. There are two types of justice, two types of crime, two types of criminal activity. Criminal activity committed by us, and then criminal activity committed by wealthy, caucastic individuals who have the power to tell the judicial system to kiss their ass. And it's happening every day. We are looking at the obvious divide, the obvious just in accuracy, the application, or the absence of justice. These individuals are telling you to your face, when white people commit a crime, there will be a different road toward justice. It'll be slow and easy. I mean, you know, we request that you appear, you tell us to go fuck ourselves. You invade the Capitol, do all sorts of things, and these nice light sentences, and you talk about how easy you're being on yourselves and how the rise of white nationalism is about to choke the life out of the United States. And you watch helpless, not being able to do a goddamn thing about it. My God, it must be infuriating to understand that the cowards are overtaking the weak in this country. As I watch them talk about all that's occurring, I look in the faces of individuals feckless and powerless to stop what they see is barreling headlong towards them. A fascist society that is uh, in full bloom. And they're terrified Two reasons. One, they're scared of the future because they may not have one. Two, they're powerless to stop it and they know it. And all I'm telling Negroes to do is to be awake 
and understand what surrounds you. Please, how separate are we? I'll tell you. Let's, let's frame how separate Hebrews, Negroes are. When, uh, when we were scouting our, uh, our soon-to-be land, creator, you know, had folks out there doing the thing, you know, Joshua, folks, come back! And they talk about the people they saw. Look, these folks are huge. We're like grasshoppers to them. Shoot, man, they're, they're huge! You know what was interesting? The commonality of the, all the nations that surrounded us. The things that they did were all seemingly the same. The practices, the worship, the attitudes, the murders. All of it seemed common to these nations, which is why we as Hebrews were meant to be separate. So when we look at them act out, and they come from different tribes, different nations. You only need to understand that that really accentuates the individualism of Hebrews. That status of being set apart by the Most High God. As we look about the nations all practicing the same things, all worshiping graven images, all pursuing worldly ideas and ideals, all on the same trajectory led by a seemingly new species of human that just showed the fuck up a few thousand years ago. And it also seems that same species is on its way the fuck out. But it ain't going quietly. It's going kicking and screaming, yelling, but it's going! So, strap in, hold on tight. Things are about to get interesting. Hey, there's an ancient Chinese blessing. The blessing is, may you live through interesting times. Now let me tell you what the curse is. The curse is may you live in interesting times. Hope you catch that. The grace! Don't drop your phone. 5.45 in the morning. Get up! How's everybody doing? That's good. So, uh, yeah, man, listen, I'm not, I'm not happy about this shit, you know, kids getting killed, but damn, whoa, no, now you want to, you want to crack down on, on gun ownership, now suddenly, I mean, it's just, uh, what, nine to five, wall to wall coverage of, of the, and, and it just, and it just, it just applies a layer of just, it didn't happen to last Saturday, it just, you know, it didn't, it's like it never even happened. That young fellow, who knows what happened to him? I don't even know where he's at anymore. He's somewhere safe in jail, right? And no one will ever get their hands on the young man that took the lives of 10 of us last fucking Saturday. Now, the individual who murdered 10 children, done! Interesting. All right, well, I'm Doug Rice. Welcome to the Doug Rice Show. It's a little early, that's right. I'm up, and I'm ready. Huh, we look at black news, that's what we do. We talk about it, we... And now, these days, woo, baby. There's something, huh? I mean, they're really, really showing their ass, ain't they? They're showing us, they're showing us who they are, they're showing us who they were, they're showing us who they want to be. And they're telegraphing their intent through their kin across the pond. I mean, nobody's talking about it, but they're finding mass graves of thousands of people. And you have to understand that energy, that murderous energy that, that was let loose upon the deaths of those thousands of people is now out and encircling the fucking globe. And individuals 
attuned to that frequency are getting energized. I'm trying to tell you, Hebrews, we are set apart. Negroes, they're treating you the way they are for a specific reason. First and foremost, you are unaffected by whatever frequency is being emitted, by whatever being or place or thing or whatever is happening. We are not in a frenzy. We are not walking about in fear. And that strikes fear in the hearts of others. And you need to feel that fear and understand that it is a danger. You must separate yourself psychically, mentally, emotionally, intellectually, in every respect. As you watch it all go down the drain, as it all just unravels beneath their very feet and prepare for the kingdom, always look for the kingdom. Black News! I think so. All right, here we go. Uh, here we go. Uh, so I look up Black News. You guys know what's happening. It's 549 in the morning. It's the 25th of May, 2022. I'm Doug Rice. Welcome. So I look up Black Lives, uh, excuse me, Black Black News, and the first thing coming, Black Lives Matter doesn't care about Black Lives. Well, yeah, they do. They care about the Black Lives that are working for Black Lives Matter because I mean they're just bringing it in for forty-two million dollars. So uh, come on, Black Lives Matter does care about Black Lives, just specific Black Lives that happen to work for Black Lives Matter. Continue. All right, uh, what Americans need to examine their relationship to images of black suffering. What the fuck? Let me just help you. White Americans need to examine their relationship to images of black suffering. That's what they wanted to say. I'm going to say it for them. It's cool. 30 years ago, all four Los Angeles police department involved in the beating of Rodney King. What? Wait, what do we do? Wait a minute. I looked up Black News. Second from the top, you want to go back into yesteryear, talk about the four cops that whipped Rodney King's ass and got away with it. Like 5,000 motherfuckers just didn't invade your capital not a year and a half ago. I mean, what is you doing? Can we write some articles about the shit that was smeared on the fucking walls of the U.S. Capitol? Are we able to at least get 10,000 words about that? Maybe a little full-page thing? No? Oh, no. You'd rather go back into yesteryear and talk about the fucking L.A. riots? What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Boy, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Whatever the fuck y'all got up your sleeve, it's not going to work. God's 100,000% in front of you. Oh, my God. Whatever you're plotting, planning, doing, it doesn't matter. It's obvious you understand it's over. It's over. It's done. Don't fight it. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. All right, let's continue. Oh, hey, I just saw this earlier in prep. To listen to this, just black men, just for a minute. Just bring it in for a minute. Listen. Two years ago. Uh, two years after George Floyd pledges, black women still denied top jobs at largest companies. And this is why. At first, I don't give a fuck about why. I know why. I fucking know why. But so you've made pledges on behalf of the George Floyd murder. And that pledge doesn't involve the ascension of black men in your companies. No, that would terrify the fuck out of you. But you ain't got a problem dividing black unity and ascending black women, and guess what? You don't even do that. So you make a promise based on the murder of a black male to ascend black women in your largest companies, and you're reneging on that idea, but I'm not lost on the fact that you Reward black women for the murder of a black man. You go fuck yourselves. I'm glad you didn't give. I'm glad you didn't give. Good. 
maybe our black women will understand that they don't really give a fuck about you. So, uh, the city of Portland tried to undo gentrification. Black Portlanders are conflicted about them. What the fuck? Here's what they want to do. They want to turn blackness into something completely different. They don't want blackness to be something reflective of the history, culture, and past you have lived through in this god-awful place. No, they want a new blackness to be presented, something wrapped in, you know, a bit of, uh, you know, some, some, you know, Jezebel shit. You know, Lizzo. Or, you know, the boy that sells the blood in the shoes. That is acceptable blackness. Gentrification aside, I understand. But you're not going to be able to get what you want. It's unfortunate. Too many of us are awake now. And we see right through you. Colorless, clear, low-frequency motherfuckers. And now, the spell is broken. And we don't give a fuck about what comes out of your goddamn mouths anymore. We don't care about your opinion. We don't care about your input. We don't care about your observations. We don't give a fuck about your thoughts, your goddamn prayers. We're bringing it in. We are going to bring it in as a people. It'll happen. You're going to notice more and more the divide. You're going to see them make a decision, and that decision is not you. And as, as the backs be, begin to turn one by one, and Negroes sit with their mouths draped open trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. They'll, they'll hear it somewhere back here, someone, someone saying, bring it in! away from them. They were never your goddamn friends in the first fucking place. Are you realizing that now? Let's continue. Yeah, I know. I know. I know the truth, huh? Just, just slaps you upside your goddamn head, huh? It's fucked up, huh? When you tell the truth, you take off those rose-colored glasses and you, and you reject the bullshit offhand. Of course you're not going to be popular. Alright. Oh, black bear that invaded, captured for years, caught and killed. I bet they're happy. I'm not even going to go there. Not going to go there. Uh, the last hired how the labor market is changing for black Americans. The last hired. That's how they prefaced that that title, if you can put that together. So the labor market changing is effectively saying that black Americans are going to be the last hired. That's good. I got my own fucking business. But Lord, are you feeling it? You feel it yet? Do you get it? I don't know. What has to happen? I mean, more... More of them telling you that white nationalism and fascism is coming back in this country and they can't stop it, and they're afraid. They're telling you to your face. Most of us aren't looking. We don't watch what they have to say, but I'm inviting you to do just that. Listen to what's being said. Brothers and sisters, please listen to the news. Don't let entertainment distract you. There's shit going on that's fucking Ominous for us. Take note. All right, continuing, continuing, continuing. Oh, what's this? Cheer stunt team posed with black mannequin head in photos online. I'm just reading the news. All I do, read the news. Search term black news, it keeps delivering. So, a stunt team decided it would be cute that uh, they take a black mannequin head and pose with it online just for shits and giggles to kind of, you know, oh, you know, express that subtle yet overt racist sentiment that they're 
parents seem to be feeding them nonstop at the fucking house. I mean, you know, here's what should happen. Kid under 18 comes to school expressing racist views, gets taken from the parents. Yeah, CPS comes in and investigates. See, that's proper, but they don't do that. Because they tell you, you can teach your kids to be a racist son of a bitch and grow up to murder people based on that racism if you so choose. All right, let's continue, you baby. I'm just going down the line. Oh, Folgers, naturally. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> don't look away. From the 10 black lives lost in Buffalo due to racism and gun violence. Thank you so much, Columbus Dispatch, 15 minutes ago, for at least keeping that in the minds of Americans and folks who claim to be these liberal, we are the world motherfuckers. Now that there have been others murdered, please let's not forget that there are 10 black people dead based on racist sentiment. The same age, same kind of child that just did this horrendous thing in Texas. I will not just let you gloss over those ten lives. All right. Continuing. I'm just saying, dog, you know, it seems mighty odd to me. Don't you ever forget. Okay, so, uh, I think we're good. What? You feel good? I feel good. I feel good. Listen. They're scared. The society that surrounds you is terrified. Half of them are filled with racist hatred, murderous intent. They want to express that violence toward anyone. They feel encroached upon. They feel as if they are being replaced. And what a dangerous individual that is. That kind of insecurity walking about free and seemingly privileged enough to do whatever it wants to anyone that that threatens its rather rather trivial existence, rather fragile existence, I might add. You know, these same people that walk around claiming superiority. I'm just not clear how can superiority be replaced so fucking easily. I don't understand it. It would seem to me that if you are superior... There would be checks and balances in place just by natural order that maintain your superior position in it all. But the degradation of your numbers and your population, your birth rates, your inability to procreate, all of these things contribute to an insecurity that has now grown a danger to everyone that surrounds you. And I say steer fucking clear. Now, folks, look, you're in the United Snakes of America. You're a Negro. You're surrounded by the nations set apart. And now we are becoming increasingly standoutish. We're like, we're in the middle of it all as we watch them all do the same things. Like they're all worshiping in the same manner. They all have the same proclivities. They all have the same desires, the same leanings toward violence, the same hatred of Negroes. And as it becomes increasingly popular to not like us, and that's going to get more and more popular, it's going to be more and more dangerous to be out there. So, if you got to go out there, I know you do. I mean, it's Wednesday, man. It's hump day. It's another fucking day. And here we are. They're ready to gloss over. I'll tell you when you get to work, first thing everybody going to tell you. Everybody going to be talking about them 14 kids that got killed. Oh, it's such a tragedy. And it is. Dear God, it is. Anybody that thinks otherwise is an idiot. But how quickly we forget. And I would only imagine that perhaps your countenance might remind people that 10 of us died not a few days prior. And as much as it pains me to hear that life has been lost through no fault 
and just through tragedy. For God's sake, man, if you're going to be putting flags at half mast, let's uh, let's be a little bit more decisive about when we do that. What do you think? All right, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. I'm good. You know, I got my coffee. It's six oh three. You know, my day is getting earlier and earlier and earlier. It's just a fucking mess, you know? And I'm out there just like you every fucking day, staving it off, just keeping it at bay. The only way that you can do it, brothers and sisters, I tell you, I kid you not, if you expect to survive the coming months, you better get practiced at maintaining a very serious countenance, one that expresses no fucking around. I'm not here to make friends. I'm going from point A to point B. I'm going to work. I'm going home. It's dangerous out there, folks. It's dangerous for adults. It's dangerous for children. The only thing I can express is that you maintain focus on where the danger comes from. In doing that, you may well preserve your lives. All right. We're out. I try to be as a flowery as possible going out. You know, it's a thing. I'm leaving. All right, guys, I got to get ready. You guys have a wonderful day. I appreciate you watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share, please comment, please, you know, you know all the things that you're supposed to do. Do that. All right. And I appreciate Detrina. Thanks so much for prepping me for the show. She giggles a lot. It's a, it's a, I'll show you one day. Anyway. Thanks so much, guys. Hey, you guys have a wonderful day. I am out of here. All right, bye bye. Wait, what, hold, hold on, wait. Listen. Um, hey, listen. You're coming at the end, first half of the year, five days before the next Monday. Your next work week begins a new half year. The way things are moving, folks, the way things are going, you know, they're about to have these hearings. Dirty laundry's about to be aired. So, as they murder us indiscriminately and then try to have us forget about it, as the first half of the year comes to a close, and as Hump Day faces us all, I just want you to be 100% prepared for whatever may happen. And the first thing I recommend is that, well, you be serious, head on a swivel, right? Make sure to keep your eye on your surroundings, dear God. But most importantly, as you go into work today, as the drive just pounds on your psyche, knowing you got a face the music. Do so with the protection all over your countenance. As you go in today, brothers and sisters, do yourselves a magnanimous favor. Get that goddamned grin off your faces. Enjoy the day. <laughs>